Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Maya, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a quick color with me in this book by Maria Troll, Moon Valley. And I kind of used my first time using one of the Color Cube palettes. So I used this, but I did uh, steer away from it a little bit. I did add a little bit more color because I found it too too limiting for me. But I did, most of it is are the, is this color. So, And I used my um, oil pastels, my Angio, uh, Mangio oil pastels, and the Prisma colors. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, find it inspiring. And let's get started. Okay, so I'm showing you right here the um, color cube, uh, color palette that I chose. This is the first time I'm using it. <laughs> Thought it was about time since I've had it for like a year. And I'm showing you the Mangio uh, oil pastels here. And I am using the red color on the bottom because I wanted a dark pink, but my set of 48 doesn't have dark pink, so I am mixing. That's what's great about you know, you can just mix them. I put them one over the other, and then when you blend it with your finger, it kind of mixes. So I wanted like a darker peach, uh, like a corally. So I just used the red underneath the other peach, and it made it like a darker color. And then I used uh, the peach, the lighter peach, and then a little bit of that cream, like a light yellow, uh, creamy color on the, bot on the top there, which is awesome for like highlight. And I think, oh, here I'm using a little bit of white as well. And um, yeah, I like to start with the background many times. So 95% of the time I will start with the background. I added a little bit of dark brown there, just to, a little bit of extra darkness on the bottom and now I am blending with my finger. And it's incredible the color payoff that you get with so little effort. <laughs> it looks like you just burnished Prisma colors and broke your hand. That's the color payout that you get with the oil pastels. And right now I am doing the top of the background with um, doing a little darker color, a little black, a little dark um, purple and lighter purples. I am putting in a little bit of uh, cool tone uh, pink there. And even though it's not specifically in the palette, it is in the picture that you see there on the palette. And um, it's kind of hard for me to really stay with a limited, limited color palette. So I'm doing my best to kind of follow it just for fun, you know. And I am adding a little bit of yellow there, um, which is, yellow does not blend with purple. It makes like a muddy color, so I will not be blending it with any purple. It's just on its own. I'm adding a little white. And looking at it now, I could see, yeah, I'm adding more pastel. You really want to add enough oil pastel. You don't want to have too much white spots so that you really get a nice, full, rich color. And so I added more later because I saw that it, I didn't add enough. Uh, I didn't add enough product on the page. So uh, this is still the messy phase, but it's gonna get much better. I promise. So right now I am taking some Prisma colors to clean up the uh, the spaces there. So I'm, I'm using my violet, my lilac, and uh, Parma violet to colors to. Um, fill in all those spaces there so yeah this book Moon Valley I, that page as you can see I have the other page colored in and a lot of times it happens to me when I want to color two images that are right next to each other I don't know why that always happens to me but this uh, image was staring at me when I was doing the other side and I really liked it it looks really easy it's very simple so I thought it started with, I wanted to do like a pinky, um, purpley background. That was like my first idea. And then I thought, hey, why don't I pull out my color cubes, which I've never used, and, you know, pick a palette. So uh, I will probably share my views on the color cube, maybe in a coloring update soon. Um, but yeah, so I decided to pick a palette. And what I love about this palette is that it has a yellow ochre in the uh, one, of, one of the colors, which is one of my favorite kind of yellowy, yellowy greens. So I love those kind of colors. So 
Um, my, my plan was to use lime peel and chartreuse in when I, when I do use that color on the page. So right here I am cleaning up, as you can see, it's starting to come together with all the purples in the spaces there. And I started with a little bit of layering and I did burnish in some areas. I did use the, if you notice, I use a lot of the Prismacolor Blender Pencil. And that is my favorite blender pencil, favorite burnisher. So I use that a lot. You'll see it in the other uh, elements of the page as well. Yeah, I know that this kind of color with me is kind of a repeat of my other one uh, with the with the yellowy orange background. But I just love doing this on these pages. So I'm just taking you along with me. Why not? I thought, well, maybe um, some of you would like to see another one. Um, but I am planning to do a little bit more, some acrylic on the background. So we'll see um, what I do with that. But um, at the moment, I'm just kind of fi finishing up the uh, the spaces there and adding some darkness in the in the bottom. And I right here, I'm adding a little bit more of a stronger yellow <clears throat> in the yellowy area behind the images, behind the girl and the the snail in the house. So um, and right here, I'm showing how. Instead of fixing with that fixative that I showed last time, the Degas fixative, the non-toxic one, which is very watery, I decided to use my golden satin glazing liquid. And you could just, I just pop it on top there as you saw. And I use a brush, a cheap brush. And that kind of seals the oil pastel. So it kind of works like a fixative as well. So it's a multi-purpose. <laughs> So I did that so that I could rest my hand on the page without getting oil pastel all over my hand. And right now I am taking a, I don't know if it's, yeah, a dark uh, sepia or espresso color. And I am uh, starting on the leaves. So as you could see on the color palette, that yellowy green there, um, I decided to use that for the leaves. and But for the shadow, I decided to use like, in the Prismacolor, the uh, green ochre, artichoke color, uh, espresso colors, so, and a little bit of black for the shadows of that. So with each, you know, each color that you have on the palette, you don't have to limit yourself just to that color. You can use the lighter end of it, the darker end of it, and you could add a little bit more colors to kind of jazz it up. So. Uh, as you can see, I am using one Brute Funer pencil in the mix here. It's similar to the Lime Peel, but a little bit different. It's from the Brute Funer Macaron set, which I love, and I use in conjunction with my Prismacolors. Right here, I am using a little bit of the Fine Tech. This is my only Fine Tech color, uh, watercolors that I have. It's a sister company to Calero. So Calero and Fine Tech are made by the same company. And I just use a little bit of that yellowy, uh, really awesome color, like a green ochre yellow, just to, on the stems of the leaves. And now I'm finishing up some, uh, some more of the leaves. Um, and you can see how much shadow I'm adding. Now the light source, I'm pretending that the light source is that middle glow in the center of the page. So that is how I am uh, acting as my light source is. So it's coming... It's a little bit of a fantasy, you know, obviously it's not a realistic page, so. Um, and now I'm adding, I think, a little bit more of the Fine Tech um, metallic watercolors, which I love so much. And that color, that is one of my favorite colors, actually. I actually need to show you the, the watercolor brush that I was using. I'll show it in an upcoming haul. Um, I found really awesome watercolor brushes for cheap, like a good pack. Uh, right here, I am starting on the mushrooms. So I'm adding black, and I'm adding uh, like a black raspberry or one of the dark uh, browny reddy colors down there. So you could just see how I'm building up the color here. Yeah, you could see there that I'm adding the peaches, and if you notice, 
there aren't too many middle colors there's kind of like that dark area and then a much lighter area which I did I uh, kind of pointed that out to you guys before I'm right now if you if you see I'm using the blender pencil that's the blender pencil and um, I'm pushing away some of the debris with a little makeup brush but yeah I mentioned to you guys before that I just do kind of like the, the very dark if you do just a very dark colors and then some light that creates a lot of drama and it's really really nice so try that and I want you guys to see how I'm building up the color because a lot of times people say that they don't really call Prismacolor a layering pencil um, which it can be either and or but it really can be like what I'm doing here is actually layering now the difference the difference with Prisma is yes you can layer and what's amazing is that you have a blender pencil that is in place of your Gamsol. You know what I mean? You don't need any mineral spirits or anything like that. The blender pencil does the blending for you. So you layer, 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 and then you can just go on top with the blender pencil and burnish, and it'll come out awesome. You're, you're going to see right now. But I want you to see how that you can actually layer with Prismacolor, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm layering. Uh, building it up and I am doing kind of like similar to where the ground is the like the pink grass that I did with oil pastel I'm doing similar color to that because one of the colors on the palette is like a peachy color so um, yeah that's what I'm doing there and that's the lightest I think that's deco peach there the last uh, color and here I'm taking the blender pencil so look how it transforms it transforms it and becomes much smoother. I did put a little yellow, if you saw there, uh, just so they can reflect the light from the glow there. And I am covering the lines a little bit with, with the um, white gel pen and a white uh, paint marker. Right over here, I showed you the colors of the Prisma colors that I showed you uh, in my hand are the colors that I'm going to use for the stems, the stalks of the mushrooms. So I am slowly layering, like you, you can see right here that I'm also layering. So you're going to see I use black, I use one of the darker, uh, maybe uh, black raspberry or one of those darker brownie colors, uh, like a warmish brownish uh, colors. So I'm layering them and I want you guys to see that yes you can layer Prisma color and it comes out amazing. So, um, yeah, there you go. So just watch that, and you'll see that I do. Uh, I'm I'm adding a lot of the darks, a lot, a lot of darks, and I'm only having a little bit of area for the light, where the light is hitting the stock. So that creates a lot of drama, and I'm using the blender pencil right there as well. So, look at the difference the blender pencil makes. Yeah, I would encourage you to take out your your black Prismacolor and really start adding more black into your blends um, or, or uh, any of the other darks. But the black really has a huge effect. Um, but the other darks, there's a lot of good darks in the Prismacolor line. And um, add that into your blends and see what a big dramatic effect it makes. You know what I mean? So... Um, yeah, that's what I wanted you to see right there. And there I go with the blender pencil and I cover a little bit of the lines again uh, where the light is hitting. And now I'm starting on these little curly um, stems. I did a little bit of Caliro previously on it. And now I'm just adding the shading. So I'm trying to do the shading on, on the side that's away from the center uh, where the light is. The light is supposedly in the center of the picture. So I'm putting the darker colors kind of on the other side of that. And the opposite side of that. And then the lighter is where the lighter colors are going to be where it's hitting uh, uh, closer to the light. So I hope that I hope I explained that good. But you can kind of see there. And I ended up using another neon. So I use the neon pink again there, 
and I've really been loving using those on for the uh, highlights. And I also covered the black lines with my neon uh, jelly roll, so that came in handy for sure. And here you can see the colors again. They're just reds, corals, and a little bit of the neon pink. And there you go, you see the jelly roll. I'm covering the black lines and doing a little bit of shading there. Um, later on, I'll come back to the house, but I am working on the leaves. Now, I really wanted to do the leaves in teal, teal color. That was my instinct, but I stopped myself because of the color palette, the color cube. So I said, you know what? I'll use the brown uh, color and I'll, I'll work from that. So um, my mind, in my mind, I wanted more of a reddish brown, but it ended up being more peachy. I ended up using a, maybe a little too much peach there, but that's okay. It still came out cute. So, but I do like the, the shading that I did. So there's a lot of drama. I did a lot of black on the bottom sides of the leaves and the highlight is on the top where it's uh, facing the light, the, the light source in the center of the page. So you can just see here I'm building up the color and I will blend it and burnish it with the Prismacolor pencil, uh, blender pencil. So yeah, Prismacolor can be layered, you guys. Um, I would definitely try it out. If you've never used your blender pencil, try it out. It's, it, it really works wonderfully. You can also blend and burnish with like a light color. A lot of people like to burnish with a white or the cream color or any of the other pastel super light colors. You could do that as well. But um, try the blender pencil, it's, it's awesome. So yeah, I'm just finishing up the leaves here. Okay, right here I am showing you the blue pencils that I'm gonna use. I decided that I really needed a pop of color and I kinda wanted to use a different color, not what was on the color palette, so. Uh, I broke the color palette and I went for uh, a blue for these little flowers. And it took everything I had really to not um, color the leaves, the brown leaves, in a teal color. I really wanted to do teal, but I stopped myself because I wanted to stick to the palette. But yeah, I ended up doing blue here. And you can see I used some cream for the highlight. Um, so that's something that's a, lot, a little fun to do. And I'm covering up the lines with acrylic marker and gel pen. And I'm taking a little bit of Calero just to finish up the stems there. And now I'm doing the little bean, this cute little bean character in like a brownish color. And uh, I'm using uh, gel pens, uh, Prismacolor and gel pens. And I'm covering up some of the lines on the leaves there with one of the metallic uh, jelly rolls. Now I'm working on the snail. And that's actually one of the metallic Prisma colors, the metallic gold color. Then I used a little bronze, a little artichoke, artichoke color, and um, one of the brute fooner also I used on the snail. Now I'm starting the house with a dark, uh, uh, the blacks, espresso, and some dark browns. So the house is gonna be like a brown uh, color. And with a little bit of red on the, um, uh, just the little, uh, oh, the roof and the um, windows. Here I'm gonna do, just finishing up those little leaves, I decided to use some greens there, um, just to make it a little bit different. And you can see I, I did the black only on one side. And when I cover up the lines, I'm only covering the lines on the highlight side. Even here, you can see. I cover the line only where the highlight is. So wherever the black is, you don't really need to cover the line because it's already black. <clears throat> here I'm doing the roof with a reddish color, as I said, and also the, wind, like the window panes or blinds, I should say. And here and there, you could see a little bit of the Brute Fooner mixed in because I'm using it in conjunction with the uh, Prisma colors. And adding some shading under the stalks. Now I'm starting on her overalls. And I decided to go for a blue also to make her pop. Um, 
and I'm just using uh, True Blue, Copenhagen Blue, and Non-Photo Blue. And later on, you're going to see I'm going to use a little bit of a neon, uh, the neon yellow to kind of add some highlight. That's a Brute Fooner pencil. Oh, there, there's the neon. And I'm blending with the Blender pencil, and I'm going to cover the lines uh, with a metallic uh, gel pen. I did her shirt there, if you saw, with two acrylic markers. And I'm doing her skin just with my usual skin combo pencils. And then I'll be doing her hair with like black and brown colors. And I'm covering a little bit of the lines of her skin with a gel pen also, the metallic gel pen. So yeah, it's coming together. If you notice that my voice is a little different now, it's because I am recording this part a little later and I ended up getting a cold. So I'm recovering from a cold, but it's all good. Here I'm doing the little bubbles with the white, like a white pearl color from the Caliros. And um, now you're going to see I put a little gesso and a little yellow watercolor on my little palette there. And I'm adding just a little bit of yellow to the white because I want to add a little acrylic to soften the line, you know, blur the line between the purple and the, the yellow. So I'm just going on the edge there kind of to create a little bit of a blurred edge, adding just a little bit of acrylic there and it kind of brings it together. So that's the finished page. Um, just a little bit of more of a close up. I hope you liked it. I really like how it came out. It was hard to stick to the palette, but in the end, I almost did. <laughs> And that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a wonderful time coloring and have a wonderful new year. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.